I want to pick your brain on something for, for a second, right? You've done security. You, you have been in combat for the better part of your life. How, number one, if you were Tupac security, how would you have protected him? W would you have done anything different? Most definitely. One, that fight at the casino would have never happened. Where b before he got shot, after the Mike Tyson fight, like that would have probably never happened. Um, I don't know, four guys riding up to, I mean, that's a... If it were my client, oh, man, that's a tough one. Especially if you don't know. I mean, we have to stop at a red light. It's not like overseas where there were, red lights did not exist. We're doing 110, 120 miles down the, the highway no matter what. Um, I can say that if my client were being actively shot at, the person who was shooting more than likely would make it out of that scene. Um it, my goal at that point would be to, one, protect my client, but I got to return fire, too. We're, we're being shot at. I'm going to have to make them count. But And at that distance, I'm not missing. So, yeah, it'd be over pretty quick. But I'd feel bad if, if my client did get hit. I would feel bad for that. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit there and just let, you know, we're not going to get shot at. No. Okay, so you, you're a marksman. Um, you, you are no stranger to guns, and, and you're pretty good with them. I'm sorry. Wait you one know, second. I think I would have drove off. I think I would have probably just drove off. They read a stoplight at a red light. My first instinct, mm -hmm. yeah, I would have probably just stepped on the gas. I would have probably stepped on the gas and just floored it. That's like your best option in a... In a for anyone out there, like vehicle altercations, your best option is just stepping on the gas. Being in a shootout and in vehicles, it sucks. Uh, yeah, I would step on the gas. That's probably what I would have done. Is yeah, Florida, in that situation. Oh, okay. Uh, I want your perspective on this, and I'm sure you've heard this conspiracy theory just like uh, the rest of us have. Mm -hmm. Many people said, you know, Suge Knight hired a, a hitman to take Tupac out. Mm -hmm. And this is all conspiracy theory. I truly do believe that Suge Knight loved Tupac and that was his cash cow. But mm -hmm. we, we understand how the rumor mill is. From your perspective, Suge is in the car. Actually, he's in the driver's seat. Pac's in the passenger seat. How hard would it have been to shoot Tupac and not hit Suge? I think Suge got hit now, in the head, know, right? He was grazed in the head. Great, he yeah. was grazed in the head. Uh huh. But if you are in that other car, you know, is that an easy shot? No. You know, to, to just take Tupac out and not hit Suge? No. Tupac, was a, he wasn't even a big guy like Suge. And bullets don't stop. You know, they were shooting through the car, too, and he was still getting hit. So for that's I don't know how should did not get more bullets into him, but that's a risky like if I wanted if I were in Shug's position and I was a part of that and a conspiracy theory was true and I was like, hey, I need this guy taken taken care of. You're going to pull up beside me. I'll stop the car and you guys shoot him up. But just don't hit me like that's a. I, I don't believe that. Not one bit for them. They'd have to be trained, highly trained hitmen who knew a lot about trigonometry, geometry, and the bullets and everything like that for them to, I'm just going to hit that guy, but not the other guy, and the angle at which they were shooting from. I could see if I was in front of the car on the hood position, and I'm just putting rounds into the windshield, but shooting from the side and not wanting to hit the driver, but just the passenger, it's, I don't know how Suge did not get hit, but no, I don't think he was a part of that at all, no. So even with somebody like yourself, you know, if you're Suge and he hired a, a, a Nick Irvin, mm -hmm. would you have taken that risk knowing it was somebody as highly trained as you sitting in that other car? No, I wouldn't have taken out the pistol. No, there's other ways I would have done it, but I would have not done it the way 
from the side like that. No, not what? No. Because then the guy who's supposed okay, to pay so me is not going to be able to pay me. Potentially. I don't want to. If I were a hitman, correct, I would not want to run that risk of like, you know, I would not want to run. That's a 50 50, if not, you know, worse odds than that of me taking out my boss, too. Or, yeah, the guy who hired me to perform a job. I'd want the job to be done the right way so I can get my check and act like I never existed. But yeah. And I've never done that before. But well, I guess overseas we've done stuff like that. They're essentially hits. You get a pager call and some things pop up on your pager and you got to be out the door in 15 minutes to go interdict or capture a guy who is a, a high value. It's a hit. You put a hit out on someone and that's essentially all we ever did was just perform hits on people. And we were really good at it. We never killed a, I've never been a part of a mission that we've killed a civilian ever. Um, I've seen it all happen a lot, but I've never been a part of one. But I would have done it way different than what the, the guys did. If, if Suge did hire them, which I don't believe he did either, it'd be a stupid hit. It'd be a risky, and I don't think he's a dumb guy. You don't, you don't become that successful in that industry for being stupid. Totally stupid. You got to mm -hmm. know something, you know? And I don't think he was, he was that dumb. He wasn't Keefe D dumb. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, this one hits very close to home, but Notorious B.I.G. was shot and killed in a very similar fashion. Mm -hmm. um, if you're running his security, you know, what would you have done? Would you have you just said, yo, I'm I'm just going to hit the gas and floor it and just get up out of here? Was there a real way to prevent that? The first way to prevent that would have never let my client go out in that environment as hot as it was in the first place. Like when I was contracting overseas, we had, we were escorting somebody, some person from an embassy to go have a meeting. He wanted to do it in Baghdad. And you could hear like IEDs or a mortar strike going off in the distance. And he was really adamant about wanting to make this meeting. And, you know, the uh, agent that we had with us in charge, he was, we had a big meeting and it was like, this is not worth it of the meeting is not worth it. Whatever money you potentially could make or whatever business you could make, it's not worth having to risk the lives of not only yourself, but the guys who are supposed to be protecting you from something we don't even know where the threat's coming from. There's no point of even going out. So I think in big situation, as a security, I don't think we would have probably went out, period, or in that that area. We could have held it somewhere else. We could have not been in that area. I don't know. It's a tough one. But if they're adamant about going out, I think we would, I'd have to call a few more of my friends and strap up a little bit differently, definitely. But just know that as a client, if something goes off or goes wrong it's a because it, we're putting ourselves in that position um be prepared just be prepared for whatever happens happens just whatever happens happens and, and and yeah that's a tough one that's a tough i've never been in a position to where i'm on a security detail and and someone decides to start shooting at us um well contracting but like, that's what you expect. You're in Iraq. Here in the States, it's not the first thing you're expecting is to be ambushed, you know? Um, uh, here, it's more about de-escalation or the, the, the best form of de-escalation would be a better plan, better route taking, better procedures, better. And there's ways you could, actually, you know what? If you're in a car, I would probably call up a few guys who knew what they were doing or teach them something. I don't know. There's position of cars different. Um, there's certain ways you can park cars or drive around in traffic to where you're cutting off different angles and ways to be attacked from wherever the main client is. And you're yeah, essentially just making like a diamond shape or a uh, triangle shape with vehicles around your principal vehicle, your principal vehicle being in the middle and you make a diamond shape around them. Wherever the threat is, one of those vehicles can present themselves on each side to stop the bullets. But it's like a lot of stuff that, not a lot of stuff that goes with it, but it's just a lot of coordination, planning, and always being on your toes. But I think I would have probably just not gone out. That's a tough one. I don't know. 
You can't stop God's will all the time. Well, no, you're right about that. Um, you know that that hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah. I I, I think um, you know the first thing we would all say is just don't go out. It's hot out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably not the best thing to do. But um, to your point, you can't stop God's will. It, it, it that's what what it is. It's it's God's will. 